Hey everybody, are we excited for another fluff edition? This time we're going to be dealing with the Calidus Assassin. And, well, the whole temple, not just one. But, here we go. Let's start with their quote. To assume the shape of the accursed and deliver death from the purity within you. Dictatus Calidus. The Calidus Temple is the subtlest of the ancient temples of the Afficio Assassinorum, specializing in the artful deception of the enemies of the Imperium. The methods of the Calidus Assassin are those of utmost cunning and duplicity. They are sometimes used on missions where overt entrances by the Imperium would upset the intricate balance of power maintained by the High Lords of Terra. It is quite possible for a Calidus operate to complete their task without the enemy forces in question knowing they have ever been there at all. However, as the tumultuous times of the 41st millennium draw to a close, the Calidus Temple is making its presence felt upon the field of battle more so than ever. The techniques that the Calidus Temple uses to bring down its targets are many and diverse and could go far beyond that of simply killing the perpetrator. The Calidus Temple undertakes many covert operations that may involve an assassin infiltrating an enemy civilization for weeks, months, even years. Specialists in infiltration, deceit, and impersonization, these human chameleons will often take the place of a trusted aide or adjutant through their utmost mastery of disguise. Using this technique, the Calidus assassin can get close to enemy commanders or powerful warlords, influencing their strategy and finally killing them when the opportunity arises. On the battlefield, they get as close to the chosen target as possible before making the kill at a critical time. Even at the crux point of a conflict already in full flow, with the commander of an enemy force suddenly slain, the balance of the battle can be skewed dramatically in favor of the Imperium. Should their target be dispatched without alerting his acolytes, the Calidus might then assume their identity instead by disguising themselves with the recently deceased clothes, armor, and war gear and using specialized elixirs to change their appearance. The Calidus assassin can assume the identity of almost anyone in the enemy's force. Using their newly appointed persona, they will either Counterman the organization's standing agenda with a few well-chosen commands or sow as much disruption as possible before disappearing altogether. In this way, the Calidus assassins not only the individual assassinates not only the individual but any contagious beliefs or policies they have spread to their fellows. As the Lord Assassins of the Temple likes to point out, Although other temples may be able to slay their targets in a fast and more dramatic fashion, only the Calidus can kill their ideology as well. <laughs> Next, the creature within. To achieve their exacting tasks, the Calidus temple specializes in the use of the shape-altering drug polymorphine. Whilst using polymorphine, an assassin must have complete control of their body, as well as a total understanding of the subject they are attempting to replicate. The high level of discipline required by the temple's gymnastic martial arts also helps the assassin achieve the total calm and concentration required for shape-shifting. Over the centuries, the masters of the Calidus temple have learnt that the female body and psyche is better to implement these changes, and that women make for better chameleons than the men. For this reason, members of the Calidus Timble are almost exclusively female. Now, ponder this for a second. 
they're shape changers. Wouldn't that mean that gender is simply a shape? I mean, if you read any of the stories with the Calidus assassin and ask them who were they originally, they have no clue. They don't even know what their original form was, if any, or anything like that. So in reality, they have no form. They are neither male nor female. Because to say that a Calidus assassin is limited to, you know, uh, shaping into female forms is obviously idiotic. Which means they probably, especially if they're killing generals and warlords and everything like that, spend more time impersonating men than they would women in the first place. That's just a guess. Maybe there's a lot of female generals out there in 40K. Or maybe they're just assassinating Eldar autarchs. I don't know. But um, how about orcs? What gender is that? They don't have any. Yeah, but I mean, if you had to pick one, I doubt you'd say it's feminine. So I always thought gender wasn't was was just something they did away with when you were assassin. I mean, are they really walking around with various genitalia? But I'll leave that to other people to speculate. An injection of polymorphine allows a trained Calidus assassin to change their appearance dramatically. Under the influence of the drug, the user's body undergoes dramatic changes that only a fully trained individual can keep under control. Essentially, the bonds that hold together flesh, bone, and nervous system are broken down, allowing the user a brief period to rearrange their physicality through sheer willpower. Whilst under its influence, they can lengthen bone, stretch skin, change the size and shape of their internal organs, convert muscle into fat, and vice versa. That sounds like that drug does a little bit more than um, <clears throat> break down the bonds that hold flesh and bone and nervous system together. That, wow, because you know you're 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 lengthening bone for fuck's sake. Never mind. I mean, it's one thing to shift things around; it's another thing to create something from nothing. Little thing called conservation of energy going on there. Even sanctums, thought sealed and safe, can be penetrated by one skilled in the use of polymorphine. Its metamorphic properties allow the user to extend, wriggle, and squeeze like a hunting snake through vents and pipelines that lead to the assassin's quarry before reverting to humanoid shape in time for the kill. Only once the polymorphine drug has done its work does the assassin release her body from its agonizing ordeal. The operative is then set in her new form until the next injection of polymorphine allows her to reassume her original shape or change to another. With polymorphine alone, a calidus may masquerade as any human being they may choose, from a fresh-faced female officer to a crippled ministorum priest. Stranger still, the medicus adepts of the Imperium have developed a range of surgical implants that allow Calidus assassins to mimic members of abhuman cultures <coughs> or xenos races, even those with morphologies as extreme as orcs and eldar. These implants consist of flexi cartilage and hardened synth skin, substances similar to those used in the black carapace of space marines. When the assassins in their normal form, these implants lie dormant under the flesh and within their bones. It is only when polymorphine is injected that these implants react to stimulants within the drug and transform. Genetically encoded shapes push through the assassin's muscular form, allowing her to restructure her body into the grotesque form of an orc, or the lithe and graceful body of an Eldar. There are even temple legends of a revered operative who underwent extreme surgery in order to transform herself into the totally alien form of a gene-stealer hybrid.
Yeah, go go read that one. That was from the uh, early 90s. Of course, at that time, they didn't really feel the need to explain the hive mind and the psychic link beyond the gene, <laughs> which would make, obviously, the physical form of a gene stealer completely meaningless <clears throat> to the Tyranid. From that point on, the assassin only could only take the shape of the monster lurking within her, a sign of her true devotion to the arts that has never been bettered. Ah, so I see. She can never change into anything other than a, other than a gene stealer after that. I guess that's a suicide mission. And then a quote, a dagger in the dark is worth a thousand swords at dawn from Anonymous. Calidus Assassins. Okay, then. Next time we're going to go the... Let's see. Oh, well, there's only a paragraph left. Calidus Assassins undergo years of rigorous training to become one of the living weapons of the Imperium. As part of this training, the Calidus pra practices innumerable ancient and secret martial arts. These operatives must move along the enemy as one of them. So choice of weaponry is always limited. In some cases, the assassin may be forced to fight barehanded. A Calidus assassin is a deadly foe, unarmed, but when carrying the powerful signature weaponry of her temple, they are all but unstoppable. Though Calidus assassins usually bear a variety of poisoned knives and hidden garrots around their person, the signature weapons of their temple are the phase sword and the neuro shredder. Phase swords are extremely advanced artifacts rumored to be of Zeno's origin. Some of the temple scholars believe they were originally formed from the inert splinters of a Satan Necrodermis. The same material used by the Necron race to bind their former masters into service. Regardless of their province, these blades are able to cut through physical armor and metaphysical protection alike. I like that metaphysical protection they're protecting you from metaphysics don't ask me i didn't write it the neuro shredder a weapon originally devised by the adeptus astra telepathica is able to destroy a man's mind but apparently not a woman's and a single ray of disruptive psychic power all must fear the calidus for there is truly no protection against her strike. Even by the act of seeking allies, her target invites death into his house. <laughs> now we got a little snippet. The Wars of Vindication. A few months after the death of the traitorous High Lord Gogi Vandire and the end of the Wars of Apostasy, the Imperial Palace was once again rocked by the violence of all-out war. This time, a far more sinister element was involved, the Officio Assassinorum. Somehow, entranced to and from the palace, entrances to and from the palaces had been barred, despite no order coming from the High Lords, trapped within its confines. Many had barricaded themselves in their chambers and in the palace, echoed with the sound of gunfire and shook with the force of devastating explosions. Van Dyer had managed to corrupt many within the Officio Assassinorum, just as he had bribed and blackmailed his way into influence within the Adepta Astra Telepathica, Ecclesiarchi, Administratum, and Astra Militarum. Foremost amongst his Asians was one Taziz Jarak of the Calidus Temple. Using polymorphine, Jarak had assassinated the true Grand Master and assumed his identity. However, unbeknownst to Jarak, the Grand Master had expected such a plot and had a loyal Calidus assassin take his place in his chambers. That's, that is, wow. So it was that Jarak had not killed the true Grand Master, who secretly mustered those assassins still loyal to him to fight against his usurper. A heinous battle raged within the Imperial Palace itself, with many innocents dying as the assassins brought their terrible skills to the war. 
The ancient arsenal of the Afikio Assassinorum was opened and terrifying weapons used once more. Weapons whose use had been banned by the Senatorum Imperialis since their discovery. Gene sympathetic nerve gases polluted the corridors with neutronic warheads destroyed whole wings of the planets, of, I mean, of the palace. In the end, the true Grand Master assassinated Jarek and then disappeared in self-imposed exile. It was this chain of events that led to the formation of the Ordo Sicarius, the branch of the Inquisition that is specifically tasked with ensuring the Officio Assassinorum remains true to the goals of the High Lords as humanly as possible. Yes. There you go. Next, we're probably going to work on the Evisor. Until then, have a good day. Mm-hmm.